A united front from Britain and the United States to launch this high-stakes summit. First up, a call on a school in Newport, a chance for the leaders to show off their Welsh. Hello, everybody. Hello. But behind the smiles, a grim recognition that NATO countries are facing multiple threats as never before and need steely determination to counter them. The threat from extremists of Islamic State is the most dangerous challenge. Even before the latest video of a hostage murder, President Obama had sanctioned airstrikes against them. Now David Cameron is hinting at British involvement. Well, I certainly don't rule uh, anything out. We should pursue our national interest, as I've said. I think the most important thing, though, to consider is that we mustn't see this as something where you have a Western intervention over the heads of uh, neighboring states and leaving others to pick up the pieces. And though this escalating instability in the Middle East is not on NATO's summit agenda, the Secretary General isn't ruling out NATO involvement either. If the Iraqi government were to forward a request for NATO assistance, that would be considered seriously uh, by uh, NATO uh, allies. And then there's that other looming threat on NATO's doorstep, faced by Ukraine from an increasingly aggressive Russia, the same enemy NATO was set up to defend Europe against some 60 years ago. But in today's complex world of warfare, it's no full-scale invasion Ukraine faces, but a hybrid war waged by Russian surrogates. Briefing NATO's leaders this morning, Ukraine's president, Pyotr Poroshenko. Alarmed by Russia's aggression, his government has reactivated its bid to join NATO. Russia says it'll resist that, but President Putin has also been making peace moves this week. From Mongolia, he issued a seven-point ceasefire plan. NATO's Secretary General, though, told me while the fighting continues in Ukraine, it can't be taken seriously.